People keep asking if I'm back, and I haven't really had an answer. But now, yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. Douchebag with a gun here. My good buddy Pablo PK reached out and was so thrilled with the response from the video about the Scar 16S that he decided to loan me another gun to share with y'all. So what we have here is that gun's big brother, the Fabrique Nationale Scar 17S. At a glance, this ain't much different than his Scar 16S, but being a full big boy caliber gun chambered in 762 by 51 or 308 Winchester. There are a few additional touches that makes this one a little different and makes more sense for this particular firearm. While the SCAR 16S has had more success in the American civilian market than it has in the US military service, the SCAR 17 is more than just an overpriced novelty gun. Now, the SCAR 17S has its flaws and I will not be shy about pointing them out to you. But there are some very cool features to this rifle. Of course, Small Arm Solutions has a good video on the platform, and Nine Hole Reviews has done the practical accuracy test with it, and shows the full capability of this weapon. Because frankly, regardless of any of the bling on this particular example, the best part of this rifle is the barrel. This gun is far more accurate than it should be, then again, at an MSRP of 3569. Are you okay? Mm, I'm fine. I just uh, threw up in my mouth a little bit. It better be pretty damn accurate. On Gun Broker, I've seen them going for anywhere from $3,000 for a plain Jane black rifle to upwards of $4,000 with a whole bunch of upgrades nobody wants. Now, FN has been advertising the second generation of the Scar family of weapons coming very soon. And they are ditching the reciprocate and charging handle, and that's pretty much it. But, at least they can tell people about the incremental changes that they're making. Sig Sauer should pay attention to that. <coughs> no idea when those are going to start shipping. Maybe they have already. But, given the current market and FN's slow trickle of inventory to the civilians, I wouldn't expect to find one on the store shelves near me any time in the foreseeable future. <coughs> Anyhow. Let's go over this puppy from ass to mouth, because that's how I roll. First thing you will notice is the stock that Pablo PK has opted to stick with is the old-fashioned Ugg boot. And there's actually a few reasons for that. Pablo tried using one of those Kinetic Development Group's SAS stocks that he put on his SCAR 16S. Problem with using that one is that it has a aluminum bracket right here that mounts it up to the gun whereas this one is plastic. And this gun is notorious for cycling so violently that it creates harmonics that kill optics. But even worse, these little screws back here actually start to go this way and get bent and mashed around. You've got a um, little swivel plate here that is made out of polymer. It's plastic. And most of the, uh, like the hinge plates that come on the aftermarket ones are made of metal and FN designed this to have a little bit of flex with that plastic and as it sits assembled you get just a little bit of flex as that big heavy scar bolt carrier is coming back and slamming in to your uh, end plate here. So if you uh, change the metal one for a scar 17 uh, you risk doing some damage to your bolt carrier group over time and those are not cheap to replace and you can also have the receiver screws. I've seen those uh, come out and or start to cant at least. So um, leave the Ugg boot on there. Love the Ugg boot. After watching his screws start to cant ever so slightly inside the receiver, the Kinetic Development Group stock came off pretty damn quickly, and he went right back to using the old Ugg boot. Moving up, we have the Parker Mountain Machine Modified Magpul Grip. And you can get several flavors of the grip and from Parker Mountain. 
that have been machined to fit the gun. They mill out a little bit of material back here so that the, any of the beaver tail things will fit up against this receiver. And the grip runs 40 bucks. We have a Magpul safety selector. This has 45 degree throw and is very positive. But most importantly, it is ambidextrous. The safety goes for 19 bucks. Now, this is the exact line that I used in the SCAR 16S video because my writing is about as lazy as Disney's. <laughs> He's got a scar, super scar trigger from Geisley in here. My friends and I tend to Geisley all the things. But this trigger is very nice, and if you were trying to take accurate shots with this gun, upgrading them from the stocks trigger really, really helps. The trigger runs 325 bucks. I'm going to take a sidebar. Because a lot of people say, douche, what is your fascination with Bill Geisley and his products? Well, I'll tell you. For one, they are some of the nicest products consistently on the market. They have high quality standards, so I've never had a problem where one of his trigger ships and is defective when I'm trying to install it. They come already polished where they're supposed to be polished. They come with the lube that you're supposed to put onto the triggers to keep them moving nice and greasy like. And Bill Geisley happens to be one of the coolest, sexiest men alive. Now, you ask my brother about him, and my brother is going to tell you that he overprices everything and that he's a big piece of shit. So, I like to flaunt all the Geisley products to make my brother feel like a douche. Triple Decker burn! Over here. The charging handle is a GG and G. Just like he had on his SCAR 16S. This is under 30 bucks and there are some other cooler options out there kinetic development group has their scourging handle which is a dumbass name but the handle is actually nice and this one works just fine moving up top on this particular one he's got a trichicon credo one hx one to eight power variable optic so i thought his scar 16s which has a 14.5 inch barrel and a one to six x vortex razor scope on top was a bit of a goofy setup. Didn't make sense to me to have a big, heavy, and expensive low power va variable optic on a rifle that was supposed to be lightweight and isn't particularly known for sub MOA accuracy, especially with that SBR. Everybody knows you never go full retard. But then he goes and has a rifle that is clearly able to push shots past 500 yards, and he only mounts an 8x scope on top. So I asked pa Pablo, I says, what kind of drugs are you on? His response was, oh. Then he went on to explain his philosophy of use for this weapon. And he mentioned something about coyote hunting, or something about coyotes. He must have a lot of coyotes where he lives, because he's always talking about them. Anyway, point is that he doesn't push out the range of this weapon beyond about 400, 500 yards. Now, the optic is pretty nice. It has really nice glass, and is built like a tank. The eye relief isn't terrible for what it is, and the reticle is pretty good. It has illumination, but probably wouldn't pass the Mr. Guns and Gear Daylight Bright test. You can get these suckers on Amazon for about $1,200. He's got it mounted in a Gasly scope mount. These go for almost 300 bucks. Now up front, we've got the Kinetic Development Group MREX rail. This is the same exact one first generation that he had mounted on his SCAR 16S. Now I talked about this quite a bit in my SCAR 16S video, but it makes a lot more sense on this particular weapon. Now Pablo first showed me this gun years ago when he first bought it, and it had a vertical grip and a bipod squeezed onto the bottom of the 1913 rail section. That would have been right around here, yo. So everything was so compact that when you grabbed that vertical grip, you were rubbing your knuckles right against the back of the bipod. Now all that gets solved with the MREX rail. It definitely makes a lot more sense with this particular build. But I think it's a great upgrade regardless. Now one thing I forgot to mention in my SCAR 16S video about this particular piece of hardware is that the rail system does keep the barrel free floated and the newest model actually decreases the weight of the front of the gun based on the use of the different hardware and some of the parts that you get to take off that you don't need no more. So I mentioned it before, but these start at 300 bucks, and then 
they do make shorter models if you have SBRs or whatever, and they knock off 10 bucks for the other two models. Uh, vertical grip he's got on here is a BCM. These are nice and have an ever so slight angle. And they mount directly to the M lock, keeping them nice and tight. They go for about 19 bucks. He's also got a Magpul bipod up here. Now, the bipod isn't terrible, and it seems pretty stable, and Magpul definitely knows their polymers better than most. The only thing I would knock against it is that it's mounted directly to the M lock, which most people would appreciate, but it's extra weight on the front of the gun. When you're not using it, it would be nice to just have a quick detach so you could take it off and get it out of the way, stow it in a pack or whatever. Otherwise, it's just extra stuff floating around. It does have some cant, and it does actually have some rotation. You can lock that down with this thumb screw on the bottom, but no matter how hard you torque this thing, you can actually force this thing to wiggle around on you still. So if you're looking for the most stable, rock-solid platform, this might not be the best bipod option for you, but if you're looking for something that ain't going to add a shit ton of weight to your gun, this is not a bad solution. For a light, he's got a Streamlight Protac HLX light mounted on an Arisaka M-Lock inline mount that pushes the light forward a little bit. He's got that run into a tape switch up here, and this is one of them cloud defensive tape switch holder devices. Now, I ain't necessarily a big fan of this, and I don't like that you're stuck using this particular tape switch with this particular light just because of the make and model and so forth. Personally, this is all extra dead weight, and it's a lot more chunky and chonky than I would actually prefer, so I'd prefer to have something smaller like a one of them mod buttons run into a mod light, keep it everything a little bit more lightweight. But this ain't my gun. So, what do I think overall? Well, this is a badass rifle, and this is a badass cartridge. As much as I have a hard-on for 300 AAC blackout, it ain't gonna thump the way that these guys can thump. This is a badass caliber. It's old school and everybody is all on the 6.8 kick and so forth, but this is still a really classic cartridge. And this gun is actually kind of fun to shoot. Even though the cycling of the action is considered super violent and destroys everything, I don't find it to be a very violent action or impulse on the recoil. It handles really, really well. There's a lot of shit on the front end of this gun that might be a little too much, but this actually handles quite nice. The optic is beefy. This is one of them 34 millimeter tubes, so that thing is going to add some chunk. First you got to do the truffle shuffle. Come on! Do it! Come on! Do it! It is a very slick rifle, and very modern, so you get all the cool features of being able to attach your gizmos and gadgets all over the place. So yeah, what would I use it for? Well, I would never use it because the gun's too damn expensive, the ammo's too damn expensive, and shit, this optic's too damn expensive. So I wouldn't even bother, but Pablo letting me go out to the range and take a couple shots every now and again, I have to say, it is fun, and I can appreciate why somebody would want one. It's just not for me. I'll stick to my pistol caliber carbines and my 5.56 five, guns. So I want to thank Pablo again for loaning me this nice piece of hardware. Be sure to check out my brother's channel, Douchebag's Brother Dick. Alright, here we go. Last few vidges talked about stuff your mama wouldn't want any of y'all doing if y'all can avoid it. It's been a recurrent theme that has drawn the hairy eyeball from some of the more ambitious operator types. Some folks have been listening, other folks been missing the point. I blame public schools for the general lack of comprehension skills. And thank you for watching. And remember, I don't know who you are out there, but I got a gun.